Coming up on this week's news, a young man dies in the shower after an unqualified electrician fails to install earth bonding. Wireless electric car chargers are finally coming to a street near you, and we reveal the winners of the 2023 eFix Awards. Welcome to Electrical News Weekly in association with Skarmy. Whether you're listening in the van, on site or down at the wholesale counter, I'm Joy Robinson and I've been through the best of the electrical industry news to save you the trouble. And as always, if you think you spotted the two words I've been challenged to slip into this week's show, comment with them below for the chance to win a prize. A young man with his whole life ahead of him was electrocuted in the shower after touching live pipework. Mustafa Osbeck died in January 2020 in a back room at Adams Cafe and Restaurant in London Road, Croydon. An investigation has revealed that the failure to ensure adequate earth bonding for the shower was the work of an unqualified electrician. Croydon Magistrates Court heard that the owner of the cafe, Sukran Sanli, paid for electrical work to be carried out on the premises by the unqualified tradesman, first in 2016 and then again in 2019, just four months before the fatal incident. Croydon Council Investigations told the court that Mr Osbeck's electrocution occurred because there was no main earth connection to the incoming electrical supply. When a fault occurred on the circuit, the fuse did not operate to cut off the electricity. This caused the metal pipework in the shower room to become live with mains voltage which resulted in his death. Two health and safety executive inspectors visited the premises and prepared a report regarding the electric circuits. They had a competent electrical contractor carry out a full inspection of the installation The overall assessment was unsatisfactory, with a number of items being identified as potentially dangerous. Sanley pleaded guilty to four charges, two against her and two against her company, relating to offences under the Health and Safety at Work Act of 1974. Magistrates ordered her to pay £60,000 in fines and costs. Sanley also received a 26-week suspended prison sentence and was ordered to undertake 200 hours of community work. In other news, Irish lighting firm Robus is entering the consumer unit market. It's just bought the Scottish manufacturer Fusebox. Fusebox has won the hearts of many contractors in recent years for its easy to install and keenly priced units. The company will remain independent and will still be led by founder Robin Forsyth, but it will be able to draw on the resources and skills of its new parent. Another corporate deal clinched this week will see wireless electric vehicle chargers finally coming to UK streets. ABT E-Line and American charge point manufacturer Witricity have teamed up to bring the innovative devices to the European market. It's expected that in early 2024, the first EV owners will be able to simply drive over a contactless charger, which will power up their battery as quickly as a plug-in charger would. The first car capable of using the kit will be the Volkswagen ID4. Models to follow include the Audi e-tron GT, the Porsche Taycan and the Volkswagen ID Buzz. Whytricity boss Alex Grusen said the move would make charging as easy as parking. But the wireless kit will have some competition in the shape of a new charger from Balfour Beatty. It has unveiled the Urban Fox, a retractable charge point that disappears into the pavement when not in use. The 7 kilowatt unit is compatible with all electric vehicles on the market. It's aimed at local authorities who want to provide power to residents without a garage or a drive. It's already been tested on the streets of Oxford, Dundee, Plymouth and Staffordshire. Balfour Beatty tell us that they want to roll out some 35,000 units across the UK over the coming decade. Another technology breakthrough this week has been reported by electricians working at UK Power Networks. They've come up with a method of stopping power cuts at homes before they happen. Often small transient faults occur on low voltage circuits several times before an actual outage occurs. By using sensitive equipment to detect these transients, the technicians can identify where and when a full fault will become permanent. They can then trace and repair it. The new approach is proving a huge success. Already the team reckons they've prevented 150 power cuts from happening. They're also installing equipment called bedoying reclosures, which restore supplies automatically after a transient fault. And no, they're not my challenge words for this week. That would be way too easy. And now... Drum roll, please. Up until last week, they were as ethereal as a silhouette, but finally, the winners of the 2023 eFix Awards have been unveiled. No fewer than seven electrical contractors have walked off stage holding shiny trophies aloft. Wigan-based KDM Electrical has been named the Residential Installer of the Year, as well as being 
ultra professional, this company provides free service to charities and those whose electrics have been left in a state by rogue traders. A worthy winner indeed. The EV installer of the year is Haywood EV of Hertfordshire. The judges cited their incredible range of ambitious projects and their developing technology. The lighting installer of the year is the super slick Glasgow based M3 Electrical. Taking the gong for the industrial sector for their workmanship on complex projects is UK Electrical Services Rail. And the smart home winner is Epix from Lancashire. This company develops their own software to help their customers save energy. Two Essex firms triumphed in the last two installer categories. WFP Fire Security and Electrical took the data and security category for their commitment to quality, while Deej Solar was described as an outstanding firm and named Renewables Installer of the Year. And the Wholesaler of the Year was also from Essex, the AT&T branch in Chelmsford. AT&T took the award for their work in giving back to the local community. They support learners from their local college by providing high quality work experience opportunities for students, and they host trade days for them as well. Well done to all our winners. You can see the full list, including the 30 under 30 roster of young talent by the link in the show notes. And by the way, now is the time to consider your entry for next year. And finally, a seagull which had become trapped beneath an installation of solar panels on the roof of a house in Oxford has been rescued by fire crews. The bird became stuck on top of a house in Old Marston. The RSPCA and firefighters operating on a hydraulic platform untangled the gull and then used a net to safely remove it from the situation. It's reported that once freed, a feathered friend then happily flew in a zigzag, no doubt, back towards the seaside. Who doesn't like a happy ending? Now, just before we get to your favourite bit of the show where I reveal last week's challenge words and winners, we want to thank our premium partners. We couldn't make the news without you. First up, for all your circuit protection needs, they're like having an Italian star striker in your premiership team. It's Ludum Palazzoli. And the best thing to come out of Yorkshire since stainless steel, it's Doncaster Cables, the home of EV Ultra and other groundbreaking and quality cables. And one of the biggest lighting companies in the world, because their capital is always Dublin, it's Irish lighting manufacturer Robus, home of great quality and innovative lighting products. Big thanks to you all. We really appreciate your ongoing support for the news. Now, if you think you know the words I've smuggled into this week's show, pop your guess into the comments and we'll dig out a goodie bag prize to the first to get the right answers. Last week's words were fuchsia and wizardry. Apparently the rising sap of springtime has affected some of the more suggestible members of the Challenge Words Committee. However, the first person to get both correct was someone who apparently only needs to go by a first name, very much the Rihanna of YouTube comments. Well done to you, Hayley. Make sure you click the link in the description to claim your prize. Coming up on our social channels, it's a live stream week and this time we're welcoming the good people from EnviroVent as guests. In order to warm yourselves up for the show, why not check out the two free training packages on ventilation that we've made with them. If you think ventilation is not something that Sparks need to be interested in, you're in for a shock. We've also got all the usual Q&As, shorts and knowledge videos dropping, so make sure you stay tuned for all of that. And as always at this time of year, we'd like to issue our formal apology to anyone in the industry who was panicking after watching our video released on April the 1st. Just to make sure we've covered our backs, the cable being used in the video is not becoming the new standard. BS6004 cable is not being withdrawn. Gary would never clip a cable diagonally, nor fix a back box with a cable clip nor fix a cable with a staple through the center of the cable. Mineral insulated cable is not becoming the de facto standard for installations in Scotland. Also, a quick Google search would suggest that BSEN 12712 relates to plastic jerry cans. Somehow it's become my job to be the elder statesman figure for the business and apologize for any inconvenience caused by the two cheeky rapscallions responsible. Safe to say their biscuit privileges have been temporarily revoked while they sit in the corner and think about what they've done. Thanks for listening to this episode of Electrical News Weekly in association with Skarmy. Make sure you subscribe to receive the next update. Thanks for listening, and until next time, have a great week. Stay safe out there, and remember, there's no such thing as a taut calibrated arm. <laughs>